Hello, Bethel family, Pastor Joe here. It's been a while, but hey, guess what today is? Today's Wednesday, so it's time for a Bible study, much overdue. And I have missed our time together, and I thank you for spending a little time with me. And I hope uh, the words that I'll share today will be encouraging because it's going to be God's Word. We are in a Bible study. Well, I don't know if you can remember, it's been a while, but um, we were looking into the book of Isaiah and we looked at chapter 1, and then we jumped to chapter 6, and then chapter 7. And now we're going to look at chapter 9. It's interesting, the words that begin this chapter talk about gloom and despair. And if you know me at all, you know that I grew up watching Hee Haw. And maybe you don't even know what Hee Haw is, but it was an old variety show, a comedy show uh, that came on probably in the 70s. Uh, showed a lot of great country music, but had some funny skits on it. And one of them was just some old guys hanging out in an old uh, shack of a house. And they were always telling terrible stories that had happened to each other. And then they would sing, gloom, despair, and agony on me. Deep, dark depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Gloom, despair and agony on me. Well, maybe you feel that way a little bit. Uh, these days are trying. These are some strange days, and I feel like I'm beating a dead horse, but all you have to do is turn on the news. We've got political wrangling. Uh, just every time you turn on the television, it's some negativity uh, from one political party to a next. Uh, we have uh, the upstart of school for a new year and all the problems that are taking place with trying to protect our children. And some of our colleges uh, started class and then immediately turned around and sent the students home so that they could learn virtually uh, because it was safer because of an outbreak of COVID on lots of different universities. There has been a lot to deal with, a lot of gloom and despair. And so I always think, how can I move through gloom and despair? How can I get out of this place of negativity? And we know the answer is always God's word. And I think we're going to find that today in Isaiah chapter 9. So the Bible study is gloom and despair, but honestly not. It's going to be good news. And our scripture is Isaiah 9 verses 1 through 7. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. You grab your favorite Bible and uh, you dig in with me and let's study God's word together. So let's hear this reading from God's word. Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humble, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel, and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, and like warriors dividing the plunder. For you will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniforms bloodstained by war will be burned. They will be fuel for the fire. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. The passionate commitment of the Lord of Heaven's armies will make this happen. Well, maybe when you hear that text, uh, you think of Advent. And actually, that is a scripture 
that uh, many churches like me would share in the four weeks leading up till Christmas Day or the four Sundays leading up till Christmas Day, uh, an Advent passage which proclaims the coming of the Son of God. But the context is what I find so interesting. It is a place of deepest, darkest gloom. And again, we often find ourselves in difficult places. One of the things we always have to remember is that this too shall pass. We have to remember that these things that we experience in our lives are always temporary. They're not eternal. Eternal is when we have been separated from this body of flesh and enter into the presence of God. So everything that's happening in our lives right now is temporal. It's it will pass over time. It will not last forever. And I want to encourage you. God's word teaches us that he knows our days. He knows the times. And he knows what we have to deal with. So let's think about this. And this too shall pass. In verses 1 through 3, we're going to see in the word of God how he encourages the people of God that though they are in a very difficult place, He's going to move them through this very, very difficult place till they can find a place of hope and renewed joy and excitement again. The text begins in verse 1 again by saying, Nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. Isn't that encouraging to hear? Nothing new under the sun. Well, let me tell you, folks. The children of Israel have found themselves in a difficult place. And guess why? Um, they have rebelled against God. And regardless of that situation specifically, there are always difficult days that we have to endure. There are difficult seasons in our lives. Seasons of loss, seasons of pain, seasons of struggle. And then you add pandemics and social unrest, and we've had just another horrific uh, incident where a man was shot in the back seven times, and there's been rioting in the streets and, and others uh, that have died because of this. And again, uh, often what happens is because of our sinful natures and our rebellion against God, us refusing to do the things that we should do, we experience great turmoil. And so uh, what's happening in our text, the children of Israel had rebelled against God. They had been exiled to a foreign land. And yet God says to them, this isn't going to last forever, but there is a, a basic understanding we have to come to. When we dishonor God, we will end up in places of despair and gloom where we don't want to be. And so uh, there's nothing new under the sun. Listen, we're still sinful folks, and we often do things we shouldn't, and we end up in places we don't want to be in. So there's nothing new under the sun, um, whether it's a pandemic today, uh, something that happened in the 1800s or the early 1900s, or the civil unrest we're experiencing today. Uh, there's nothing new, but the good news is this too shall pass. Better days will come, and we look forward to those better days. Well, sin is the issue here for the children of Israel. And I would say for us as humanity, sin will always be the issue. We are selfish by nature, and we often choose to rebel against God and not do what it is that God would have us to do. And so when sin enters in, we enter into a place of gloom and despair. And sometimes it's not our personal sin, but it's the sin of our culture. It's the sin of our world, which brings about chaos and disorder. And the times be a change. And yes, this, these are the words of Bob Dylan. And maybe you don't even know who Bob Dylan is. But uh, let me share a few words from Bob Dylan. The title of the song, The Times, They Are A-Changing. He says, come gather round people wherever you roam. Come gather round people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown. And accept it soon. You'll be drenched to the bone. It's your time 
to you is worth saving, if your time to you is worth saving, you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone for the times they are a-changing. Come writers and critics who prophesize with your pen and keep your eyes wide. The chance won't come again. And don't speak too often for the wheels still in spin and there's no telling who that it's naming. For the loser now will be later to win for the times they are a-changing. Come senators, congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway. Don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled. The battle outside raging will soon shake your windows and rattle your walls. Well, the times, they be a-changing. The best news is, and I thought how uh, apropos uh, Dylan's words were for today, and he wrote them a long time ago. The good news in this text is the times they are changing because God is going to bring about the change. We often think everything we are experiencing, especially if it is all our fault, will last forever. Our God never leaves us where he finds us, and he is more than willing to forgive. I don't know if you can allow that to saturate a little bit, but yes, negative things happen. We get ourselves in negative places, and yet we serve a God who knows our humanity, who never leaves us in these places of chaos and turmoil. So let's see how this happens. Let's dig in again to the word and see what we can learn. Well, in verses four through five, we learn it won't be by our hands these changes that are, that are going to take place. You see in verse 2 it says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. You will enlarge the nation of Israel and its people will rejoice. They will rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest and like warriors dividing the plunder. And then catch these words. Or you, speaking of God, will break the yoke of their slavery and lift the heavy burden from their soldier shoulders. You will break the oppressor's rod, just as you did when you destroyed the army of Midian. The boots of the warrior and the uniform blood stained by war will be burned. They will be the fuel for fire. Our God will do what we as humanity cannot. Exile and slavery are the key. The people of Israel had sinned and they were lost in a place of sin. And yet God's word says a place of light. Uh, newness is coming. Change it is a coming. Who has the power? God has the power. He alone has the power to change what we're experiencing. You know, too often we think we have the power and it only leads to futility and frustration when we try to solve our problems without turning to God. And deliverance is real. Our God will break the oppressor's rod just as he did in the past. Our God is always working for our benefit. He is always coming to our rescue. Well, we often think we can work or think our way out of the problems we face. We think we have the power or at least some form of control. On the clearest day possible, we realize only he has power and control. I don't know if you're in that place yet. Maybe you're trying to work out your struggles, you're trying to work out your problems, and you haven't come to the place where you find out that it is God. It is God who intervenes. It is God who comes to our rescue. It is God who helps. I want to encourage you right now. If you feel overwhelmed, if you feel in a place of despair, you know, just right now, bow your head before the living God and just, and just acknowledge your weakness your inability to rule the world, your inability to change others. And really, I think our greatest struggle is when we realize our inability to truly change ourselves. It's only God who can change us. It's only God who can make us new. You know what? If you ask him, he'll do it. Well, we're going to end with the greatest possible news 
ever. The greatest possible news ever. This will take a complete intervention. Yes, the days are filled with struggle. And we are in a place of gloom and despair. We will need God to intervene. And this too shall pass, but it won't be by our own hands. It'll be by the very hands of God. So let's look at this portion of the text, verses 6 and 7. For a child is born to us. A son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and his government and its peace will never end. Our God knows we need a complete intervention. Well, not what we expected. Yes, this is an Advent text often referred to that way, but it's God's word, and it reminds us that God sent his son as a baby. A child would be born. Our God knows how to intervene in our places of struggle and chaos and suffering, but he never does it in a way we will expect. And I, I can tell you right now, maybe you prayed and you said, Lord, I need you. I need your intervention. And and you have already maybe thought of how God will do it. Um He'll probably do it in a way that you never expected because he's God and he can work in any way he so desires. Power will be evident. Power will be evident. And it says the government will rest on his shoulders. The government will rest on his shoulders. He will have absolute sovereignty. He will rule over all things. And you know, Sometimes in our days, we wonder, where is God? Because we look at the chaos, and I want to encourage you uh, with a few thoughts. One is, uh, we haven't come to the end of the story. Uh, two is, we know the end of the story, and in the end, God wins. God brings about his eternal glory and our eternal reward as those who seek to serve the living God. His power will be evident, and even if we don't see it today, oh folks, one day we will truly see it all. And names are given. I don't know if this can encourage you, if it can overwhelm you, but I want you to think about the names, the very character of God that is revealed that will come to alleviate our chaos, our stress, our anxiety, his name is Wonderful Counselor. Some translations separate those two words. Regardless, he will be a wonderful counselor. Our God knows that we need counsel. We need encouragement. We need someone to guide us. And maybe you're in a place of emotional despair. Our God is our counselor. Maybe you need a place of strength, a conquering hero, and he will be called Mighty God. Now listen, we know God is almighty, but just to clarify, his name is Mighty God, Everlasting Father. He's never leaving. He made us a promise. We see it in Joshua chapter 1, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He says to us, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous, he says it again. But the third time he says, be strong and very courageous for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Our God is faithful. He is our everlasting Father. And when life throws more at you than you could ever imagine, and you don't know how to cope, He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. And of His and His government and its peace will never end. Well, our God does what we do not deserve. Our Heavenly Father knows what we need far beyond what we comprehend. Not only is He all we need, but He clarifies our greatest need by name. His name, at the name of the living God, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that He is Lord and that He will reign forever and ever. Well, gloom and despair, these are real terms. Uh, these are real terms experienced in a real world by real people. The cause will ultimately always be the same. Sin brings about gloom and despair. The response will also always be the same. God, our God shows up in our darkest days and reveals himself to be all we need. He will not leave us nor forsake us. 
When we learn this great truth and apply it to our lives, we experience all that he has always planned for us, an end of gloom and despair. Well, let's pray together. Let's be encouraged together. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you are always with us, that you're better to us than we've ever deserved. And we want to thank you that you show up in the darkest places, in the places of most overwhelming gloom and despair and grief and pain and suffering. You do show up and you reveal yourself, the very character of who you are to us. And so Lord, I pray for me, I pray for my friends that even in these moments these very moments today that we would experience your peace that surpasses all understanding, that we could see that you're a wonderful counselor, that you're mighty God, that you're the everlasting Father, that you truly are the Prince of Peace. And Lord, reveal that within our souls, even this day, and we will be eternally grateful. Hey, amen. Amen. And our God is good. And all the time, God is good. Hey, God bless you richly as you seek to know him and experience his great grace and willful intervention in all of our gloom and despair. Hey, God bless you. Have a great week. Bye-bye.